Wow. Uh, breaking news that Tesla's self driving event, it actually has already begun. And news out of the event is just now hitting the wires. I want to get a couple of pieces here for you. In the wake of the battle that Tesla's had with its lithium battery partner, Panasonic, Tesla CEO Elon Musk just announced its new partner for the chips at the heart of Tesla's self driving initiative will be made by Samsung. And I am just seeing this as well. Tesla and uh, its CEO Elon Musk are slamming what is called a LiDAR sensor. Now, that's what Waymo uses. Waymo uses the LiDAR sensor, as it's, sensor, as it's called, uh, for its self-driving vehicles. Elon is saying that those sensors are, quote, fool's errand, and any company relying on LiDAR is, quote, doomed when it comes to self-driving. So in typical fashion, Elon Musk is coming out swinging at his Investor Day event, focusing on full self-driving. I'm looking at the stock right now. It's still down about three and a third percent. But let us now get back to the rest of that Tesla tape we froze for you going into the commercial break. And here it is. This is out of China. Smoke begins to pour from underneath and then boom, under that Model S, Tesla spontaneously combusted, engulfing the car in flames. This reportedly happened at a garage in Shanghai. The video, caught by security cameras Sunday night, went viral. Now, Tesla is saying that it sent a team to Shanghai last night to investigate. The car was parked, so there were no reported injuries, thankfully. But could Elon Musk's big investor autonomy day, when the company shows off its roadmap to self-driving technology, be a big casualty here? Because it's the 14th Tesla to catch fire since 2013. To our Tesla panel, David Kennedy is a former NSA hacker and a Tesla owner, and Derek Kessler is the managing editor of Mobile Nations. And uh, let me first, if I could, um, Derek, get to you on the news that's breaking. Uh, let's hold off on the fire for the moment. I'm very interested to know what you make of this. Samsung will be the new chip partner. And, of course, he's taking a swipe at the LiDAR sensors, which certainly other uh, autonomous vehicle companies are using, uh, particularly Waymo. Sure, it makes sense that Samsung is going to be Tesla's new fabrication partner for their chips. They're one of the largest silicon manufacturers in the, the world. They actually were responsible for a long time for making all the chips that went into Apple's iPhones. So they have a lot of expertise in taking other people's designs and actually putting them to silicon. And it, it makes perfect sense to go with Samsung. And as Elon said in the event, they're going to be making them in Texas. So it's yet another part of America's EV being made in America. As for LiDAR, uh, there are a lot of competing schools of thought on that. LiDAR does have some advantages in being able to image the space in 3D, but it also can have some detractions in the form of like it gets confused by snow and rain. And they, Google, using their LiDAR system in Waymo, had to build a very complicated mm. AI system to even deal with rain, whereas Tesla just goes with radar and cameras. It's it's a choice of one or the other, uh, and typical Elon Musk he uses a lot of hyperbole to justify sure, his decisions. Sure, exactly. Um, let me get to David. David, not only are you a Tesla owner, but you're also a, a real expert white hat hacker and a trusted sec. You've got you to really explain to us how you see the self-driving issue coming through, because it can be hacked, can it not? And, and what have you seen or heard about Tesla's plan? And by the way, Tesla's is not fully self-driving. It's sort of at level two versus level four, where you don't need anybody in the driver's seat, certainly. But give us a sense of, of the security of what Tesla's unveiling. Well, I think that's some of our, our major concerns when it comes to autonomous driving. If you look at what cars have traditionally been, they've been black boxes. Uh, and underneath your car, there's a it's called a car area network that, that sends data back and forth. Mm -hmm. And now we're now shipping all of that back to Tesla's infrastructure. And all of the car manufacturers are starting to do this, uh, bring a lot of data back in uh, and analyzing that. If you hear Tesla's uh, thing today, it was really focused around how much data they actually send back to their neural network to be able to process and to be able to identify anomalies and things like that. So these, these cars are no longer these black boxes. And so what that means is that the, that interconnectivity, uh, uh, you, you have the ability to hack into multiple points, whether it's the car, whether it's the servers that are running, uh, the infrastructure to collect that data, or the updates that are being pushed out over mm -hmm. their updates that Tesla leverages. Uh, it's definitely a, a major concern. One thing I can say is that 
Tesla is really far ahead of the game when it comes to being able to send and, and secure their, their cars after uh, certain security defects have been identified. Uh, there was okay. a security researcher at DEF CON um, that, that published a, uh, a, an attack against a Tesla car, and the very next day, Tesla pushed an update out. So they're usually pretty quick to respond to these threats, but it still doesn't get to the larger picture around how much data we're actually sending back to uh, Tesla's infrastructure mm -hmm. and what these autonomous vehicles really uh, actually need. And Derek, concurrently, you've got the fire situation that happened in Shanghai. Yes. And uh, people, to be fair, make a huge deal of 14 spontaneous car combustion situations. Yes, it is stunning and frightening to see, but with old school, uh, you know, internal combustion engines catching fire, 168,000 car fires in 2017 alone of, of just regular cars. So let's not get hysterical here. I mean, no one's posting those on Weibo or, or YouTube. My question to you is, does it overshadow, what's the PR impact here on Tesla's big day? It is definitely going to overshadow because uh, Tesla's investor event that they're doing today is very detailed and technical focused, at least so far. Uh, and they've been talking about chipsets and neural networks and a lot of high level stuff uh, that's going to lay the groundwork for how the full self driving system is going to work in the future. Whereas a car bursting in flames is very viral, it's shareable, and it's ricocheting around the world mm -hmm. while Tesla is coming out and trying to say, here's what our cars will do in the future. Uh, so it is sort of a PR black eye and very poor timing yeah, yeah. for Tesla, but that's just one of the things you got to deal with. Um, and David, as we finish up here, you know, you're, you love your Tesla, though, correct? I do. Actually, Tesla is the best car I've owned. It's like the iPhone of cars, and uh, you know, you get updates for it, and uh, you know, you get updates for it, and everything else, uh, and they're continuously migrating. If you look at kind of their their um, past, they already had hardware 2.5, you know, so, uh, and a year and a half ago. Uh, their new hardware that's coming out had already been for a month. So it's just a lot of okay. uh, uh, updates that come through it, and the car manufacturers can move very quickly. And I think security gotcha. can move that fast as well. David, Derek, thank you so much for being on our Tesla panel. We are coming right back. Tesla's still down about 3%.